Hi. Hi. Tell us about yourself. Wow. Um, I've practiced this in my head so many times, mm-hmm. so I have an automatic answer. Mm-hmm. So instead, let's go for a natural one. Okay. I am a mother. Mm-hmm. I am a student. And a dreamer. Wow. If it wasn't for the dreams, then I don't think I will be able to get out of out of bed every morning. And I am obsessed with escapism. So I tell myself, I wake up and find a new way to escape. So I'm listening to something. I'm reading this book. I'm coming up with ideas. Dreamer. Wow. What is your name? My name is Michelle Capucho. Well, Michelle, you have mentioned that you're a mother, so kindly tell us about this. Where do I start? <laughs> um, I became a mother in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, the journey wasn't as smooth as I would have liked it to be, um, but we made it through. So I had a harrowing surprise when I found out. And then it translated to my parents finding out. There was mixed reactions, to say the least. Mm-hmm. And um, and then they were supportive in the end. So they took care of me. I got some complications at birth, but I came out. And that was the beginning. Okay. So from research, I know that, and from sharing with you, I know that you're a single mom. Mm-hmm. And this is an experience you're passionate about, sharing with others. So could you kindly share with us what the experience has been so far? Um, I didn't start as a single mother. I started with a very supportive baby daddy. And uh, he, I think to the best of his knowledge, he tried. Mm. But at some point it was too much. We were too young, Mm. we have a child, our relationship was really still a baby mm-hmm. itself, so we've added another one to it. Mm-hmm. That was crazy. So when we had a fallout, I was okay with it, oh. but I refused to be labeled a single to be labeled a baby mama. Mm-hmm. I am a single mother, mm-hmm. but I don't like that label. Mm-hmm. So I cho- I saw that instead of letting that label consume me. Mm-hmm. I could give you one to call me by. Mm -hmm. So, single mother it is. Okay. So, how young were you when you had this child, when as a couple you had this child? Oh, we were young. (laughs) I gave birth in 2021. Mm -hmm. I was literally 21. Wow. Mm. Okay. If we're being technical, Mm -hmm. I was two months from being 21. So, is that 20? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. I was that young. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned your parents were the mixed reactions at first. Yes. And then they ended up being supportive. Yes. So what would you say is your relationship with your parents? How how do you relate with your parents? My parents and I have always been close. Mm -hmm. Um, I have older brothers Mm -hmm. and I am the last one. Wow. So my parents and I have just always been close. Mm -hmm. My father calls me best friend till date Mm -hmm. and he's a grown man. (laughs) You should hear him call me best friend. <laughs> and my mom and I, there is no big age difference between us mm. because she had me when she was technically younger. Mm. But we've just always been friends. Mm. My mom is the person you tell the things that are bothering you. Mm. Part of being a dreamer is I'm always in my head. Yes. So I'm always thinking about all these things that are driving me insane. Mm. And I will walk to her and I will tell her. So mom was thinking, she, she's like, oh, here, here comes. Mm. Something's about to go wrong. Mm. What what are you doing? Mm. What are you thinking? Yeah. You're thinking too much. Mm. Um, my parents and I have just always been really close. So while it was a shock for them at the beginning, mm. they came round. Mm. And you, if you ever saw us today, you wouldn't say there was ever any friction. Mm. Yeah, that is beautiful. Time heals. Literally, <laughs> time is a master healer. Yeah. Um, what would you say are some tough lessons? No, not lessons. Some challenges Mm -hmm. that you have gone through specifically that are unique to you being a single mother. Let's start with Mm -hmm. 
I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> to be very honest, mm -hmm. I was a baby myself. Yes. And my family has treated me like a baby my entire life. Mm -hmm. Now I have a child. <laughs> what are you saying? So, um, it, at the very beginning, when my son used to cry, mm -hmm. it frustrated me. I don't know what he wants. I don't speak child. Yeah. Um, so it's either, <coughs> excuse me. So he either wants to have his diaper changed, and sometimes I've done all of these things. He's not wet. Yeah. He's fed. Mm. He just wants to fuss. Yeah. He just wants to cry. Mm. So I would cry too. Let's cry. <laughs> Let's find out how this thing is going. So that was the greatest challenge in the mm. beginning. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing, mm. and my mother kept telling me, "You'll be fine." Mm. None of us really know what we're doing all these years, and I'm like, no, mm. that can't be the advice you're giving me. It can't. Mm. But over time, mm. the routine helped me find out find out mm. what works for me. Yeah. The second challenge would be my baby daddy and I never lived in the same place, so I still lived with my parents. Mm. And when many people are going through all of this, they have to put this in. To use this word very loosely, they had their spouses, yeah, and I didn't. Mm -hmm. So, at first, I was running to call him, I was running to tell him, "Oh, this is happening. I don't know what to do." When I was crying, he's like, oh, "Why are you crying?" <laughs> See, he won't keep quiet. He won't stop crying. What mm -hmm. do I do? Mm -hmm. And I don't know. Eventually, he just got tired. Mm -hmm. I felt like I'm being too dependent. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just started withdrawing. Mm -hmm. So at the at the time that we should have come together, mm -hmm. we Which drifted is. further apart. It's played a very big role in us not being together today. Mm -hmm. Yes. That is interesting and unfortunate. <laughs> um, so did you have support <coughs> or a sort of community? Did you receive help during this time as a new mother? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned, I have older siblings. Mm -hmm. So the brother that I am closest to, his name is Brian. Mm -hmm. And Brian and I have been close for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I just I just thought about it the other day. Mm -hmm. They really came through. My mom took some time off work to help me be understand what is going on. Mm -hmm. She needed to feed me. I was recovering from a C-section. Mm -hmm. She was trying to understand how to care for me better, mm -hmm. how to take care of my child, so when she leaves, mm -hmm. I won't fall back. Yeah. At the same time, my father got into a routine. Mm -hmm. He'd leave work early, mm -hmm. and he'd call me and ask what I want. And he'd come and we just chill in the house and we're watching movies. Mm -hmm. And he's asking me, today, today what are we watching? Mm -hmm. And we just kind of got used to being together a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my brother was the one who I think really came through. Mm -hmm because Brian was with me right from the start. Mm. Uh, post, post CS, he made sure he walked me up mm. the stairs, mm. down. If my son, actually he woke up a lot, mm. because by the time I'm getting up from bed, mm. my son is tired from crying. Yeah. I have to find a way to get up mm -hmm. without hurting my stitches, yeah. not making them come out. Mm. And by that time, the child is just mad at me now. Mm. So he was the first one through the door. So he takes the child, mm -hmm. as I figure that out. Mm -hmm. He was there through the naming process, helping me find a name for my son. He would spend time with me. He would call me at some point. He moved away from home. Mm -hmm. So he would call me every day. How are you? Mm -hmm. What is that head of yours thinking? <laughs> are you driving yourself insane? Mm -hmm. I know you are. Stop it. So my family were really eight at that time. Mm -hmm. They were really eight. They came through. I had a very supportive nanny. Mm. She would take the child and I would go to sleep. Because my son had this peculiar routine. Mm -hmm. So when we are supposed to be sleeping, he doesn't <laughs> want to sleep. He wants to be awake, mm -hmm. admiring the lights and he's looking at them. Mm -hmm. And I'm tired. Yeah. We are all tired. Mm -hmm. And my parents went back to work. So it was just the nanny and I. Yeah. So when they're leaving in the morning, mm -hmm. now my son wants to sleep. So the nanny would take my son mm -hmm. and I'd go to bed. They, they were it. They were the support system. They were it. And that support system makes a huge difference. Yes. It is the difference. And they are still there till date. Because my best friend is pay, played a role, mm -hmm. a crucial one, mm -hmm. because she was my diary. Mm -hmm. 
she was my diary. Yeah. So she will come about every week mm-hmm. just to see my son, to see how I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And uh, Kichangala is not that close. Yeah. So <laughs> the diaspora. Yes, mm-hmm. quite literally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she really she really tried. So mm-hmm. add that to my family. Yeah. They were it. Wow. They were it and they are still it. That is beautiful. That is not the story of many single mothers. Mm-hmm. That is so beautiful. I have expected to have been thrown out of my parents' house, mm-hmm. to be let down a forceful marriage. Yeah. I saw that one coming. Yeah, that's beautiful. It's so beautiful that it did not go the way you thought it would. And we thank God. Yes, we do. So at least there has been there have been uh men in your life who have stepped up and who have helped you in this journey. Yes. And um your baby daddy, is he still in the picture right now? Does he still offer support? Whether it's from a distance, is he involved? Define picture. <laughs> Does he call to find out how you are? And if you do not feel comfortable answering that question, it is well. We do not have to answer it. Um, my baby daddy is a father when he wants to. That's okay. it. Okay. Okay. Well, Shout out to the brothers who step up. Yes. Um, what is uh, something interesting that you learned through this entire experience that you did not know before that motherhood has introduced you to? Or any, many things, as many as you have learned. Um, interesting. Mm-hmm. Or surprising. Funny. Funny. Mm-hmm. I particularly enjoyed that my son used to smile in his sleep. <laughs> it's weird. You dream and you smile, mm. that was weird. Maybe they're seeing angels. Right? Mm. And his leg used to twitch a lot. <laughs> so when I wake up running, mm. something's happening. Yeah. Mm. I guess so. Okay. That will have to be it. Mm-hmm. How would you say motherhood has changed you? Whoa. In a very big way. Mm. But to an extent, mm-hmm. I think it just brought out who I always was. Mm-hmm. Um, there is there is a piece I wrote a long time ago, mm-hmm. and the the forward was I've lived in a bubble my entire life, mm-hmm. and everything was geared towards protecting Michelle. Mm-hmm. She's the child. Yeah. If my father could put me back in that bubble today, mm-hmm. he would. Mm-hmm. But it had to burst at some point. Mm-hmm. And I had to see the world for what it is. Yeah. So I think that applies here too. Mm. Because I have really, really come a long way. Mm. It's one thing to know that you have the potential to become something. Mm-hmm. It's another whole thing mm. differently. To, to, be, to be it. Yeah. To become it. And so that's what motherhood did for me. Mm-hmm. It brought me from that crybaby mm-hmm. to very resilient person. Yeah. <clears throat> it is it is through this that I'm learning that perhaps there was always a little dragon inside. Ooh, mm. Can we see? Yes. Ooh. I am learning that perhaps she was always there. Yeah. Mm. You just needed the baby to bring it up. Literally. <laughs> the baby came out with Because the right baby. from the right from the beginning mm-hmm. every story is of how he and I emerged on the other side, mm. how we came out on the other side, yes. resilient, stronger. Mm-hmm. Um, like, like the birth story. Yeah. I almost didn't make it out of the birth, mm-hmm. and I came out. Mm-hmm. So when the doctor is coming to see me, the next day is like, Wow, mm-hmm. good to see you. <laughs> you almost didn't come through. So, yes. Okay. That is beautiful. And how would you say your family has grown from this experience? As a unit, as a collective, because they have been there and they have walked the journey with you. Yes. I assume your brother of today is not who he was before. No. Yeah. No. Your father, your mother, they are not the... In fact, they are grandparents. True. So how would you say this experience has changed them? As and as a family now, how do you now relate? While I'm sure it's changed them mm-hmm. individually, mm-hmm. as a family, we've become closer. Mm-hmm. When, when children grow up, mm-hmm. We want to be our own people. Yeah. So we stop being as close as we were to our parents. Yes. We want them to see us as adults. Yeah. And that's what went on in the Kapucha household. Mm-hmm. So the boys grew up, they want to be men. Yeah. 
I want to be my own person. Mm. And somewhere along the lines, they, we just stopped talking. Yeah. Like we could be seated and we are, we are gathered at the living room and no one is talking to the other. Mm -hmm. So we sit, we sit, we sit. And when it's time to go, mm -hmm. okay, good night. And that's it. And everyone turns off mm -hmm. to their rooms. Yeah. But the Kapucha household today mm -hmm. is very different. Yeah. The last time we were all together, mm -hmm. there was so much joy. Mm -hmm. There was so much merry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Everybody wants to be gathered around Miles. Mm -hmm. They want to see him playing. Mm -hmm. It's, oh, you remember when he did this? Mm -hmm. Oh, you remember when he didn't have teeth? <laughs> oh, you remember, yeah. right? Remember you taught him how to walk? Mm -hmm. It's that exciting. Mm -hmm. And we've grown really closer. Mm -hmm. So right about the time when Miles was born, mm -hmm. we stopped the tradition of going to family gatherings. Mm -hmm. Instead, we started our own tradition. Mm -hmm. So Miles could inherit that one. Yeah. And we pick a place mm -hmm. and we go see nature. So we are hiking, mm -hmm. we are outdoors. Mm -hmm. I will definitely be tired, <laughs> but it is worth it. Yeah, it is. And at the end of the day, we come out with those memories. Mm -hmm. The last memory I have when we were together mm -hmm. is so fulfilling. Mm -hmm. And even when we're talking on the phone and mm -hmm. everything, it's just, it's very different. Yeah. We are cl I think it's as cliche as it is. Mm -hmm. We are closer than we've ever been. <laughs> That's beautiful. Yes. Oh. I mean, trust a child to bring your clothes up. Trust a child to do that. Yes. So, motherhood normally requires a lot of sacrifice. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of sacrifice on the mother's part. And I mean, the child literally, you, you sustain the child. Literally, they feed from you. Everything there yeah. is from you. So, and generally, it's something that um, women are even told to take care of themselves. Mothers are told to remember to put themselves first. Self-care, you know to put themselves first so that they can be able to pour into another cup. The mm -hmm. children, the family, for those who have those and taking care of the, the other people. Mm -hmm. I can imagine it is even more demanding of a single mother. And uh, nobody, I'd say, um, from research, uh, I know that uh, we, many women struggle with um, following their dreams, their life paths, at the careers even, pursuing the careers, and putting the child first. So, uh, what what is your take on that? How, what are you, uh, are you at a balance right now? And how do you think you have navigated that? Or how do you plan to navigate that if you haven't yet? That, um, you know, the, the, the corner room. Yeah, that's, that's a wonderful question. Mm -hmm because it was the driving point behind the conundrum story. Uh -huh. um, oh, the conundrum story that you have published, Dear Diary? Yes. Okay. The second Dear Diary was about this. Okay. And <clears throat> like I said, mm -hmm. I am in enchanted waters. Yes. I've never been here before. Mm -hmm. And anyone I try to ask for help mm -hmm. doesn't give me what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. So I remember when my father found out I was pregnant, mm -hmm. He asked me one question. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you stopped going to school? Mm -hmm. I said, no. Will you go back to school? Mm -hmm. I said, yes. Mm -hmm. To the very end? Yes. And in my father's head, the very end is PhDs, <laughs> like, like 100 PhDs. Uh -huh. So I said, yes. Mm -hmm. So a year after Miles was born, mm -hmm. 2022, I went back to school. Uh, and he was very, he was very happy about that. Mm -hmm. He loved that I proved him right. Yeah. But that was the beginning of a different challenge. Mm -hmm. Because while I'm an evening student, I get to spend the day with my son. In the evening, I have to be somewhere else. And I come back late. And then there are the demands of a normal student. The student life is not easy. Yeah. So you add that on to motherhood. I haven't found the balance yet. Okay. I really haven't. Mm -hmm. I am trying. Mm -hmm. But I find myself wondering, what next after the degree? Yeah. What next? Mm -hmm. Because many of the people who I am turning to are my mother's siblings. Mm -hmm. And from what I know about them, mm -hmm. when they got their children, school came to an end. Um, it's different for the men because yeah. they still went on. But what now? Yeah. Do I go on? Mm -hmm. Will I survive the throngs of a nine to five? Will I survive? And I am very sure that I still want to 
further this degree that I'm taking. So should I enroll in a master's class? Does that mean that I will stay at home back home the same time, regardless of the fact that I left in the morning? I am, I am at a loss because I don't know what to do. And that was that was really the driving force behind that piece. See, it's easy when I'm writing these things mm -hmm. because I'm literally drawing from real life. Yeah, these are the things that I would say to my diary. Mm -hmm. And I just sat down and I would I was thinking, dear diary, mm -hmm. what next? Yeah. So I don't know yet. I haven't found the balance. Mm -hmm. But should I find it? You'll be the first to know. Thank you. I will be very honored to okay. to do. Um, I've heard that there is no balance, uh, particularly for women. Maybe for men there's a balance, but for women there's no balance. For mothers mm -hmm. there is no balance. You, there's a theory, I don't know if it's by Sheryl Sandberg. Mm -hmm. uh, you can read her book, it's called Lean In, where she says that you have five, it's like balls, glass balls, and they're all up in the air. And you decide which one you're going to drop at this time, and then you're going to pick it up at 10 a.m tomorrow then you put this other one up and then which one you're going to drop at 1 p.m and then you put this other one up so they're all getting priority but at different times but they're all they're all being met the priorities are all being met so that's a theory you could look into <laughs> i could try you could try because i want to see the bigger picture mm -hmm. i want to see that after this this yeah. after this mm -hmm. it's this that was always the plan to see yeah. to have the bigger picture and actualize mm -hmm. it and then that plan was thrown off the board mm -hmm. and i have been trying to put back the pieces mm -hmm. i'm playing it's like a chess match mm -hmm. but the pieces are on the floor yeah. where's your queen where's your knight <laughs> whoa how much time do you have <laughs> <laughs> so um you've mentioned having a bigger picture and the pieces now we're relating it to chess, the pieces are on the floor. Has this picture changed? Is it still the same? Like Miles is now here. So is everything going to continue the same? Is the picture still the same? Or have certain things had to adjust because Miles is here? The picture is the same. Mm -hmm. Because what I want from life has not yet changed. I don't simply want to be comfortable. I want it all. I want to be disgustingly overeducated. Oh, you've done this. Oh, wow, so have I. <laughs> oh my God, you're doing this. Mm, I have that too. I want to have all of these degrees, all these certificates. I want academic prowess. Okay. And I want power. What is power? In my head, mm -hmm. everything. Ugh. I want to walk into a room, mm -hmm. and I don't have to tell you who I am. Yeah. And I want you to know what my name is. Mm -hmm. This is going to sound very egalitarian, mm -hmm. but I want a dynasty of my own. Because while I didn't come from a dynasty, mm -hmm. I want one to come from me. Yeah. Which is perhaps why I'm sticking to the bigger picture. Okay because I know how to get it. Mm -hmm. But it calls into question, there is a different perspective mm -hmm. of Miles. Yes. Where does he fit in? Mm -hmm. What am I willing to sacrifice yeah. to get that picture? Mm -hmm. Is that dream mine mm -hmm. or is it ours? Yeah. I could probably lie to you mm -hmm. and convince myself mm -hmm. that it's ours. Mm -hmm. But we both really know it's mine. Yeah. That little girl, mm -hmm who was always in that bubble, mm -hmm. wanted to conquer the world. Yeah. I want that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not very sure where the line is between that and being a mother. Okay. So that's how, that's literally what I was saying. I'm at the proverbial crossroad. Yeah. The road taken mm -hmm. and the road not taken. The road taken is easy. Mm -hmm. You put your child first. Yeah. It's easy. Mm -hmm. It's actually second nature. Yeah. It comes automatically. But what about me? Is there room for me? Mm -hmm. Should there be room for me? Pertinent questions. Mm -hmm. Pertinent questions. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> well, let's go to on a lighter note. <laughs> what is unique about your parenting? 
I am a tough person, mm-hmm. but I'm not a tough parent. You believe in gentle parenting, as they put it. I really don't. Uh-huh. But I just don't find it in me to be that harsh. Mm. What is it like being a parent as a Gen Z? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's giving Zimbabwe. <laughs> mm. uh, tell me what your normal day <coughs> looks like. Uh, my normal routine mm-hmm. is... I am not a morning person, okay. so I probably slept late, mm-hmm. watching a movie, mm-hmm. coming up with articles to write for this week, mm-hmm. catching up on some much needed reading. Mm-hmm. So I prefer reading when the house is quiet. Uh-huh. Trust me, mm-hmm. that is the time when it's quiet. Night time, <laughs> that house is quiet. Mm-hmm. <coughs> so when morning comes, my son is the first one to wake up. He is always up by six or seven. Mm-hmm. I don't know what's wrong with children. Right? <laughs> That's not me. As a child, I never slept actually. I'm sleeping now as an adult. Hey, I am the same person. I slept even as a child too. <laughs> so Miles is the first one to wake up. Mm-hmm. He will probably wake up after my nanny, mm-hmm. sometimes at the same time. Mm-hmm. So he has his breakfast, he's watching TV. Mm-hmm. And then I come trotting down with eyes swollen. I'm still haven't had enough sleep mm-hmm. at around ten. Mm-hmm. And I have breakfast. I sit, catch up on a movie or something, an episode, and then books. Mm-hmm. But that book, books part is tricky. It's very tricky. Why? Because I'm, the books are competing with miles for attention. Yeah. You can't be studying for long. Mm-hmm. And by long here, I mean 10 minutes, trust me. You can have 10 minutes and he wants this or that. He wants your attention. And when you don't, mm-hmm. it's a tantrum. tantrum. Oh, mama, you're not giving me attention. You're not looking at me. Okay, fine. <laughs> and he tells me, come, sit with me. I sit. Let's watch whatever he's watching. Mm-hmm. So I spend most of the day with him until around 4 p.m. when I have to leave and go to school. Okay. Go to school, mm-hmm. come back. Same routine. Wow. What are you studying, by the way? Criminology and security Ooh, management. Okay, Miss Annalise Keating. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How do you punish your child? How do you, how do you discipline your child? How do I discipline? Mm. Mm. I don't like saying things more than once. Mm. <clears throat> but you see, toddlers have a special talent called testing. Mm. And they will really test you. Mm-hmm. So you say something once, twice, and they're like, hmm? Mm-hmm. So he's learned how to stick his tongue out. Mm-hmm. No. And the other day, he just flat out and told me, no. Stop it. No. No. You chase me. <laughs>